Bye, Jingos. Bye, Crikey. It's another episode of Aussie Tech Heads, episode 317, 22nd of November. Hello, everyone. Hello, Lounge. How are you going? AussieTechHeads.com.au forward slash live. If you want to join us in the lounge every Thursday night, Queensland time, 7.30 p.m. Uh, and uh, join us there and have some fun with all the other little lounge lizards that are there every week. Uh, yeah, so welcome, everyone. Welcome. Uh, Aussie Tech Heads hosting is the guys that, uh, well, the subsidiary. That's massive subsidiary that uh, brings that brings the podcast alive each week, and uh, and produces it and all that sort of stuff. So uh, AussieTechS.com.au forward slash hosting. So get some of that. It's affordable. It's fast Aussie servers and uh, some good plans. So um, have a look there. And also uh, thanks to Brad and TechWebcast.info for he let uh, the replay of the show before Aussie Tech. It's every Thursday night on the live channel, and that goes. He started around about seven o'clock, something like that. So uh, check out his webpage if you want to know more. Uh, the video of the show is all obviously recorded and that can be seen just by clicking off the homepage. So that, that's all nice and easy. And the paper, twice a day into your iPad. So that's all good. And uh, so that's about it. Let's get cracking. Let's get straight into it. And we'll welcome everyone. And I think the final host has just arrived or is arriving as we speak. But let's say hello to Will. How are you going, Will? How are we? <clears throat> Good, good. How's your, week? how's your week been? <laughs> yeah, not too bad. Hot, wet, um, yeah. stormy, hot. You yes. Know. <laughs> Did you get the, you been getting the storms every couple of nights? Yeah, we, uh, we, we've been really lucky here. It sort of literally misses us by 100 metres and sort of all around us. So we get a bit of rain, but we haven't had the hail or the anything like that. So Yeah, we don't um, get too much uh, damage here either. We seem to just miss it. It's amazing. You think it's going to be a, a, a bottler, but it, it misses us. So that's good. Just, yeah. Yes. And uh, Eric, how are you going? How do you do, sirs? Good. How are you all? Another busy week? Good. It has been a busy week, and um, we've had um, rain and not no humidity, no sun, no summer. Uh, give it away. Go home. All right. Now, now I'm wearing a jumper. Look at this. Oh, jeez. Oh, so you're not in the air conditioned? Oh, no. I'm in the air conditioned, but it's freezing. Yeah, right, right. Well, I'm in a in a t-shirt, and it is. I've got the aircon on twenty two because it is rather warm. And so I've got to ask you, how is your modem issues this week? Um, they've settled down a little bit, but still not perfect. Better tonight than it was last Thursday. Right. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that it will remain so. Yep. Good. Well, you're putting pushing through a pretty good picture, so that's good. That's good. good. Now, all the way from uh, Dick Smith's helicopter, looks like Shane. <laughs> How you going? <laughs> or is he is he is he wigging out? He's frozen. He's frozen. I it. Oh no! The helicopter the has crashed. Fl- <laughs> it's crashed. The helicopter's crashed. Sent out a search party. <laughs> helicopter's we'll flown below just, the. Uh, well, we're speaking of weather, just quickly. Um, yeah, some of the, the the footage of the hail and stuff has been absolutely amazing. Which, of course, um, you know, without all the technology we'd have, you wouldn't see that. But uh, I just want to say on the weekend, I was actually down at Evans Head and we were probably 500 metres from the storm front that destroyed an entire town down there. It just tore it apart. It, it, it tore roofs of houses. It actually moved some houses off their foundations. It destroyed the bowls club. But literally, actually, the wind was that strong. It actually ripped up the sheeting, like bitumen sheets off the, off the road. It got yeah, under right. the bitumen and just lifted off big sheets. Oh, I believe that. I believe that. It mm. was just amazing. Like, it was devastating, but it was amazing at the same time. Like, literally, w- the next morning, we jumped in the car and drove 500 metres, and there was caravans upside down. There was massive big um, pine trees that were snapped. Yeah. You know. And- well, I used to live down in, like, I grew up down in Coolangatta there, and after a big like summer storm and like cyclonic conditions as it was every Christmas, New Year's and stuff, uh, you, you'd walk down the, the beachfront and because, and, you know, there's the, there's the road, like the Gold Coast Highway just goes along the, the beachfront there. So there's a, mm. a road, bit of a park, not too much, and then the beach. And uh, along the, uh, the, the, the ridge of the, the, uh, the, the ocean or whatever you want to call it, that there's all these rocks, you know, that make the big, that some go out and make a big groin and there's, there's all these like big, rocks there's huge boulders and the the sea used to whip them up and, and throw them onto the road that's just amazing. Brilliant. the power of the sea amazing, the power yeah. of the sea and uh, mother so, nature that's it you can't beat it you can't beat it 
I think uh, Shane has has come out of the helicopter. He's in the he, he's in the um, ejector booth. <laughs> How you doing, the cone Shane? of silence. I'm I'm back. Yes, I'm good. All right. So um, yeah, I think it must have been your little uh, your, your screen was chewing up too many PC resources. Yeah, I um I forgot that I actually had I was playing with VidBlaster the other night. Oh, good. And uh, and how's your week? What's been going on with you? Another busy week for you? Uh, yeah, another busy week. Apologies for being a little bit late. That's um, all right. What happened this week that was different from last week? Um, Nothing really. You Same knew what the table. cricket score was going to be on the first day. You didn't know yeah, that last Michael week. Clark's doing well. Another <laughs> double century. Oh, how Ricky Ponning's doing sensationally well. <laughs> oh, how good's he doing? <laughs> oh, but I can't believe the score. Five, nearly 500 runs in one day. It's, it's amazing. And when we're three for 55 down, so come on, Aussies. Come I, was, on. I was listening to the radio this afternoon, and the statistics for the day was from over one, from the first over to the last over of the day, they averaged 5.5 runs per over. Yeah, that's... That's, uh, that's unbelievable. That's one day, that's that's, one day stuff. Yeah, that's, that's right. Say, yeah. That's right. That's good. Yeah, that's excellent. All right. Well, we better uh, move into some stories, I guess. Does anyone want to start? Or it's this. It's this week in sport with Glenn and everyone. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> that's right. Well, look, I'll start with one. I'll just go with the first one that's come off the uh, off the off the off the, the mill here. Twenty uh, first November two thousand twelve, which was what yesterday. Carbonite Australia uh, has uh, will will cease to distribute. Carbonite Australia will cease to distribute its on-range uh, backup software. There you go. What in do you mean? In Australia. So, well, so uh, the backup, your files will continue to be backed up by Carbonite, but from Carbonite's data centres in America, the Australian support team will cease to exist. So for all, just they'll just go poof, and they're gone. So, all, uh, so for all support or inquiries, you will need to contact Carbonite's support team in the US. So, um, Did they give a reason? Uh, yes, we understand that the lack of local support and international location of Carbonite's backup servers may have deterred users from renewing with Carbonite. This is why we created this. Well, my, my service with Carbonite has always been with the States anyway. Mm. So maybe. .com rather than dot .com .au. Um, but you would find, though, that your backup would still go through the Australian server because it's the local. Possibly. Oh, no, 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 no. I signed up .com, not .au. I pay US dollars, not, not Australian Oh, so you'd be definitely in the US, straight in there. Yep. You'd be in the US, but you'd be using their backbone probably to help with your speeds and stuff like that. Possibly. Mm. Whereas you won't have that now. You'll just be trying to like send data to the state. So Well, that's great because yeah. now it'll be slower. Excellent. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so speaking of which, so we know Eric is on Carbonite and I'm on Crash Plan, which I, I get. I've got, I, and I've got Backblaze as well. Oh, yes. I use Backblaze. Yeah, why, why do you use that? Why do you use two then, Eric? I've got Backblaze for one computer because it's got an external drive with um, some important files, for example, photographs, yep. um, which was too big to fit on just a normal hard drive. Right, right. So I put it on an external drive, and, and Carbonite only recently, um, only recently, um, what you call it, allowed you to back up an external drive and it, but what they charge is is ridiculous. So um, I stuck with I was with, I was thinking I was with Backblaze about a year ago. Mm. So and they're fine. They're okay. Oh yep yep yep. Yeah, that's good. So and yeah, so, no, the, yeah sorry uh, Will. Yeah, I was going to say I use Backblaze because you can you can map a network drive and you can back up back up that as a as a so you can back up all your systems under one account. I've got about yep yep two and a half three terabytes backed up. Ooh. So. So that's like a whole drive over there somewhere just got your name on it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and the cool part about Black Backblaze, actually, if you want to, for the sake of 80 bucks, they'll send you a two terabyte drive with your data on it. That's right. Yeah, nice. So that's if you exactly don't want to download right. it, I love that. Send it to you. If you don't want to download it, say, oh, look, pay me 80 bucks. I've lost my drive. You know, it's cheaper than, you know, going to, you know, Steve Gibson's place and, <laughs> you know. <Yeah. laughs> that's it. Yeah, so that's all right. And uh, Shane, do you use any backing up services? I do. I use a company called iDrive. I think it's about 50 bucks a year and it gives me 150 gig. And um, yeah, I do the same thing where I just map a, map a drive and that way I get around the restriction. So like, how anal are you guys with backing up? Because like, I back up... Myself. Extremely, extremely. Yeah, like, I think I'm backing up too much these days. Like, I've got my Windows home server, which 
data which duplicates certain data. So all my data that is irreplaceable, I've got duplicated on the server. So so it's um you know so to re- drive redundant, so if a drive breaks, I just pull it out, put it in, and the the data is still available because it's actually sits uh, is copied to another drive. So, yeah, so it's uh, you got a redundant RAID or something, yeah. a RAID one or RAID zero. Yeah, and and uh, but I'm also backing up to crash plan, and then I also yep. <laughs> back up to another external hard drive. So that's all right. That's okay. That's not too much. You're supposed to have three backups. Yeah. 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 I don't well, think... Yeah, that's it. You're supposed to have three backups, and you're supposed to have them on two different mediums. In what is it? That's right. Three, and one off site. Three backups. Th- yeah. Two different mediums. One off site. Three, two, yeah, one. Three, two, one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so um. So you're right. Okay. I think there's um. I think they've got a name for what you do, though, Glenn. Yeah. What's that? Ain't it'll be some sort of um. <laughs> it'll be it'll be some sort of um. Therapy kind of thing. Oh yes, <laughs> backing <laughs> up as uh, like Exviticus. Now, uh, you're back. so when someone says you're backed up, that's they right. Mean, <laughs> they mean completely something different. I need a crash. I, mean, I, don't, I, need a crash I don't back up. The reason I have backblaze is because it does it. If it wasn't for that, I'd. I mean, I don't have a RAID. I don't have a NAS. I don't have any of that. Um, so if it wasn't for backblaze, just backing everything up all the time. I would never remember to do it because mm. I'm hopeless. So I think that. Oh, look, I just don't have the time to sit there and go, oh, let's just put that schedule out in my diary. And when it reminds me, I'll go into the office and press a button. I don't have time to that. Yeah, exactly. Got to be automated. Oh, yeah. Got to be automated. Well, mine does it every. I, I think I can set it, but I think it's pretty much straight away, just about. I think. It's straight away. As soon as there's a. A change. Um, well, a carbonite might be the same as Backblaze. As soon as there's an incremental change in a file, it'll. it'll Yep. It'll back that up straight away. Yeah. So it's, 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 so as soon as you start working on something and save it, it'll send it. But look, I found that uh, that crash plan was for me. And look, you might be sitting there, listeners, uh, just thinking you haven't got a backup solution. Maybe you should think of it. If you've got photos and stuff on your on your hard drive. Oh, yes. You, got you, don't a, you need a backup mistake. solution, you know. Like you might, yeah. you might copy it to a CD or a DVD, but they, they fail. You know, they fail. Yeah. Um, you copy oh, they do. Yeah, yeah. People, well, people don't realise that. Unless you use like a Kodak Gold, which is a 100-year shelf life, most cheap CDs and DVDs anywhere... They go, a couple 12, of years. 12, 12 months to two years and that's it. They're yeah, gone. It. Yep, yep. So yeah. They're just, they're just uh, drink coasters after two years, really. <laughs> Hang them from the ceiling and let's watch them uh, That's right, shine. very wow. pretty. Yeah. I actually have more than I thought I did. I've actually got, uh, I've actually got four and a half... Uh, terabytes backed up. Or you can go really high tech and get a and get yourself an iOmega zip drive. <laughs> no, I, I moved on to the jazz. <laughs> oh, the jazz. I've got the, uh, the USB two meg floppy. Oh baby. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, and and did you did you cut the notch out of the side so you could uh, flip it over? And use the other side. No, that's the uh, <laughs> that's the seven twenty k one point four four. Yeah, that oh, always. Oh, yeah, go nuts on that. Oh, the good old days, eh? The good old days. The real floppy disks. Yeah. You haven't backed up until you hear... Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> That's right. Look, I've, I've lost data. I, I, look, I'll be the first to say I've lost data. I've learnt my lesson. Um, yeah, yep. That's it. Only happy, you only lose it once. I've lost, I lost data once, and I've been anal about um, backups mm. ever since. Yep. Annoyingly, well, the only time I've lost data was when I changed from Mosey back to Backblaze. I was just starting to back everything up. My Mosey back account had expired. We had a power spike that took out my NAS and my local hard drive. So the only time well, I did Mosey, Mosey, Mo, you, Mosey did that for you, mate. They just yeah, exactly. want to teach you a lesson. So I have lost all my data, but it actually wasn't... No, well, I mean, I, I guess, I, you know, I had three backups, but I couldn't access any of them. Brilliant. So, so now there's a bit of a range there. I think that if, if listeners, if you're listening and you haven't got a, a backup solution in the cloud, I think it's time to get one. For me, Crash Plan was good. Uh, look, the cheap plans, the personal plans, I'll probably only back up your immediate computer. But I was, I put my, I put the Crash Plan onto the server. So therefore, you know, the computer backs up to the server, there, yep. and so therefore, yep. the server is the computer that backs up. So that's that's good. Yeah, that's right. A cent- central point. Now, Crash Plan was quite inexpensive. Uh, for mine, and that's why I went with them. I think for four years, and I think the plan is still there. For four years, it cost me a hundred bucks. So what's that? Twenty five bucks that's, a year. That's so, pretty. That's pretty inexpensive. Yep, yeah, and, that, um, and yeah, that's unlimited. Back, unlimited. Backblaze is uh, backblaze is um, five dollars a month if you pay monthly. 
Yeah, or, or fifty bucks a year, yeah. Or fifty dollars like a year, or ninety five dollars for two years. Yeah. Unlimited. Yeah, yeah, unlimited. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yep, yep. So, uh, like, and yep. if you use, I actually have a. If if you're interested, you can send me an email, and I'll send you a partner ID, or you can watch the old Talkback Tech episodes, and you'll get ten percent, um, ten percent discount on that as well. I can send you a affiliate ID. Well, Is that fair sponsor? <laughs> now, spe- speaking of sponsors, this show is brought to you by Backblaze. Now, speaking of sponsors, <laughs> no, uh, I tried that; it doesn't work. We mentioned <laughs> <laughs> we mentioned the Aussie Tech Heads hosting. Now, if you are one of the extremely uh, intelligent people that have uh, signed up, I would suggest that you do learn how to back up your site as well, because um, look, that, that that can be retrieved in case of extreme emergencies, but it gets retrieved from the actual server where it actually lives, and it costs money. So, so I would uh, back it up yourself. Learn how to do it. It's not hard, and do it. YouTube it or Google it, but do it, because um, look, remember my site, the Aussie Tech Head site went down. It was it was down for ages because um, some spam little dude, malware little dude, got in there and just smacked it around, and uh, it was closed down because it was yes yeah, spewing out too much spam everywhere. So the servers closed me down, and I had to redo the whole page. So that's no good. So back it up, back it up. All right, let's move on to something else. What else have we got going? Um, Eric. What's going yes. on iTunes? It's, it's, Rumor. it's finally coming. Well, yes, we can start with that one if you want to just preempt my story. <laughs> <laughs> well, wh- how can... long does it take to come? That's what I wanted to know. Well, they, they, it's selling uh, on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Back up, back it up. Oh, where do you want to start? Uh, where do you want to start? Hang on. Uh, I've got it here. Whoo. Artists, artists are being asked <laughs> to prepare for iTunes 11 launch in next days. So I, I, that means the next week, I'm assuming. Um, according to a post on the Mac Rumors Forum, Apple is asking record labels to submit pictures and galleries of their artists to iTunes to use in iTunes 11's new music store. Nice. nice. Dear blank redacted space, <laughs> starting with iTunes 11, which is about to be released within the next next days, users have the possibility of viewing to view pictures and galleries to every artist in iTunes. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, there you go. So yeah, I would suggest that uh, give it a week. So this was wasn't this launched back in September with the? Oh, it was supposed to be out in October. Yeah, so that's it's now right. going to be out in December. Yeah, that's right. But anyway, it's, it's, yeah. it looks like it's finally coming. Uh, it's so, finally. So yeah. so that'd be well, good. You know, they want to they want to get it right, I suppose. Now I've seen seen rumours that there's a new MySpace going on, and I saw a rumour that it was like invite only, but I went there and I logged in, so I don't know what, what the story was. You want to know who owns MySpace now, don't you? Oh, Timberlake or something. It's Justin Timberlake. That's right. He bought it. Mm. Mm-hmm. Good, good on him. Bring, good on him bringing sexy back, baby. Well, that was eleven dollars well spent. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, it's a couple of Starbucks <laughs> coffees for you. I thought uh, Russell Crowe might have bought it. He oh yeah, run yeah. that into the run down into the ground too. <laughs> now, uh, what other iTunes news is there, Eric? Did you have another? No iTunes. I've got a couple of Apple thingies. Rumor. Yes. Apple to introduce next generation iPhone and iPad mid two thousand and thirteen. So it's less than a year. Uh, well, nine, three months short of a year. Yeah. Uh, a new report from DigiTimes claims that Apple's supply chain expects the company to introduce its next, next generation iPhone and iPad around the middle of 2013. Yeah, However, okay. the information is not the focal point of Monday's story. It's there, instead, it focuses on the fact that Apple suppliers are expected to have strong results in the first quarter of mm. 2013 because, of course, Apple's ordering from them. So there you go. That yeah. could be true. Now the other the other iTunes news that uh, that's what I remembered that you had in your notes was uh, Akadaka. Yes, they've, of course. They've finally, oh, they finally so, made it. So good. Yes. So you want to take that one? I'll take that one. Um, and I might even play preview. Um, ACDC finally available on iTunes. Lifehacker notes that ACDC's music music has finally appeared in digital form on iTunes. Um, once the Beatles signed up, Australian hard rockers ACDC were the biggest major act holding out from selling their music on iTunes. Um, so, and uh, so, yeah, so, so, so what's it? You can get a complete set. So this must be no, every. You can get the box. You every get the ACD song. collection for one forty nine ninety nine. You do that. Oh yeah, I'd mate. do that. It's, not, if, it's the whole collection. It's not bad. The complete yeah. set for two thirty nine. Well, what's the two thirty nine includes ringtones? Is that right? Oh, I don't know. ACDC's 
selection includes the complete set for 149 studio collection for 99 and ringtones live at river plate as well as individual albums now here's my this is my favorite song you ready you ready yep That one's all right. Well, there's, there's a DC, DMCA there's takedown notice. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> no, hey, well, promoting ACDC. Go and buy ACDC on iTunes now. $229.99 for the whole collection. There you go. I've just given them a free plug. They can't take me down now. All oh. right, let's have a couple of questions. Yeah, um, baby. What quality is it? Is it DRM free? And why do we think that bands like the a- uh, Akadaka and Beatles take so long? Is it because of of their age or the? No, it's, it's all they... about licensing. Oh, it's probably a little bit of the old-fashioned stuff, you know, going on there. But it, there's a licensing issues too. They want to make sure they're getting a good deal. They don't. It's DRM free. It is DRM free. All of iTunes is DRM free now, and it's two fifty six. Is the is the um two fifty six k is the quality? They don't. No, want... they still. Yeah, they the, I thought they still did an, un, an uncompressed or a higher one, or is that only on certain? I will tell you. I will download one now. Because I just thought there were some that were doing them in like five twelve or something. You could. You might have a choice. I'll. I'll. I'll I think. I believe. I think. I think oh, hang on. on. On iTunes Match, if you buy the two fifty six version and you use iTunes Match, you will get the five twelve version. Right. I think that's how that works. So to answer another part of that question, Shane, I believe that uh, they held out from going to iTunes because iTunes takes so many percentages of... Uh, of 80% the, or something. Oh, it wouldn't be 80. No, 30%. 30% or something. 30%? Sorry, yeah. 30. Left 80%. Oh, they still have to pay the 30%. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Sorry about that. And I think that, you know, they're saying, well, they're popular enough but, that they can be bought elsewhere. But... Okay. I think it's finally got to a point where it's been counterproductive to not be on it anymore. Mm. Um, a few years ago, they could hold out, they could rely on CDs, although most of the bands make money from touring anyway and merchandising. But I think now they've finally got to the point where they've realised, well, okay, this isn't going to work. We have to now do something about it. So. Hmm. That's right. That's 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 exactly right. Now well, uh, that's a, this this one's a twelve meg file. It goes for five minutes. So what does that uh, tell so, me? It's probably uh, 512. Because at 256, uh, three, it's about a meg a minute, isn't it? Well, one meg a minute would be five minutes. So it must be 512. You're right. Because it it's 12 megs. Is that right? No, hang on. One meg a minute would be five megs. This is 12 megs. So that's over one meg a minute. Roughly. Yeah. So I think a that normal must, like, three-minute song is about three and a half, four megs. So... Right. Yeah, that's at okay. 128. Yeah, oh, 128. Okay, so that's probably at 256 then. Yeah, yeah. That, might, that might be right. Mm. Now, uh, where else? Oh, did I see, what was I... Uh, oh, did you have any um, Android stories this week, Will? I do. Um, I've got a, a sneak, I had a cu- I've got a quick one, uh, but we'll see <laughs> if you cover it first. So you go, um, you go. There's, there's, there's a couple of them. Um, sorry, why do I keep scrolling down to the G-pad? I'm not sure. Um there's the Rockstar Games, who are one of the, the largest game manufacturers, uh, well known for Grand Theft as a Grand Theft Auto, you know, massive franchise. Um, they've finally decided to release um, Vice City, um, and then because it's their tenth, uh, is it ten years? Hang on, let me just find the story. Uh, yeah, because it's their ten year anniversary for something. Um, they've decided to release. They, they're going to be releasing some some more of them, uh, some of the older ones as well. But uh, the Vice City um, is expected to be four ninety nine. Uh, it's also being released onto iOS, which is you know which is good. Um, but it's basically the full game. Apparently, it's going to have. Um, a lot of the times when games go to mobile devices, they sort of just like have the basic thing and it's not you know, that exciting. But apparently they're, they're using proper lighting effects. They've got you know, high-quality character models. They've got um, you know, full... You know, what makes a game famous is the helicopter. You know? So 
uh, yeah, so and it's also going to be updated to natively support retina displays as well. Cool. So obviously you're probably going to need a decent bit of hardware to run it. Oh yeah. Things like the uh, Asus EPC uh, E um, Transformers, uh, Samsung S twos, uh, you know all the newer stuff, the new Galaxy Nexus. So you'll need a fair chunk of hardware to run the thing. Um, but it'll be pretty neat. <laughs> It'd be nice to have that chunk of hardware. It'd be fantastic. Yeah. Especially given now there are a lot of Bluetooth uh, controllers out there that are shaped like PS2 controllers or PS3 controllers. So a lot of the newer games coming out are supporting the the controllers. So it's just like playing it on a on a console now, uh, obviously with a smaller screen. Although some Android devices and allow video out to HDMI. 1080p output anyway, so it'll be just like playing it on, you know, on a on a uh, PC. So did you hear through the week that now this is just changing the subject a little bit to Android 4.2, which is the Jelly Bean, which is found on the Nexus 4 and the Nexus 10, is missing the month of December from its, mm -hmm. its calendar. Now oh, I saw that. Yep. Just that one app. Yeah. Yeah. Now the problem just comes with the People app. Uh, it doesn't affect the calendar application. Now this guy Rohit Naik. He said, when I pressed new event, the calendar came, but it was not having the option for the month of December. But, you know, I, I, when I was just get it, grabbing all these stories together, I, I've got to ask the question, is this a joke? Like, because, no. because you look at the pictures, the, all the pictures that are available on the internet that I could find, uh, like this guy goes, oh, I, I found it when I went to put in my brother's birthday in December. December wasn't there. But then the pictures that are, are going around, the, yes, December's missing, but December 2011 is missing. Why wouldn't they have taken a shot of like two, 2000, December 2012? And plus, the shot that I've got here up on the screen, this, this shot here, has got the 30th of February. So that's, <laughs> that one's way out of whack, that one. So that's what I'm saying. Is it, is, it the, is it just really bad or is it just a whole joke or just a, a ruse? It's just a... a no, it, it's actually thing. missing because I loaded up 4.2 on the... Uh, on the SDK and loaded it up on there, and it is missing. So, but that'll only happen until they release the new new update, which will be pretty soon. So, yeah, all right, good stuff. It's just it's it's not the it's not the four point two Android. It's got nothing to do with the calendar or anything on on the Android operating system. It's just this particular app. They when they when they coded it, they um just missed out December every December. It's not just December this year. Right, it's just December isn't in the app. Well, what happened to the thirtieth of Feb? Bum bum. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, now, Shane, you've got uh, this Dropbox. What's going on with them dudes? Uh, yeah, just let me scroll down to that. Dropbox is great. I use it all the time. Love it. Love mm. Dropbox. Yep. I love don't. it. You don't? Who doesn't? I, mean, I, don't, I, don't, I don't hate it. I just don't use it. What do you use? You're crazy. Have you got um, an alternative? Well, the only thing that I... I mean, I, don't, I mean we use it occasionally at work. Um... And that's only because of external contractors and stuff we have to, to you know, pass files around to. But things like with my uni, I use either Evernote or SkyDrive. Right. Evernote's um, good. Ever SkyDrive's Evernote's, pretty good. Evernote's used to be good. It's not, not so much, not as good as it used to be. Oh, um, I love Box it. is good. And if you sign up with Box on your Android device, you get 50 gig free. Box but I, don't, I, don't use, I don't use Evernote. Good. Oh, yeah, Box is good, but I don't use Box Ever is good. I don't use Evernote to uh, I hardly use Evernote anymore. I used to. But what can mm. you can you um, push files up to it as well? Can you? Like, or, or yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I don't yeah, use it. Yeah. I just, it's like a virtual drive. I just use it for note taking. I think it's great. I love it. It is good for note taking, taking pictures and hiding it in places no one looks. <laughs> no, not just, no, look. I, I um, when I'm uh, going through stuff or building something or whatever I'm doing, I've got a to do list. I've got I've got it all broken up, but I've, I just put stuff in the thing. I've, you know, I've got. Uh, customers in there and stuff. I can get access to their information on the road through the iPad or iPhone app. I love it. I love it. It's great. Good. Love it. But Good. anyway, Dropbox, what's going on, Shane? Uh, yeah, so Dropbox, uh, Dropbox has unveiled a new tool for developers intended to make it simply it's simpler for adding Dropbox to their web applications, much like the recent integration into Facebook groups. Uh, Dropbox Chooser is what it's called is set to basically offer uh, another way to access photos, videos, documents and other content stored within Dropbox. Dropbox software engineer Dima, something unpronounceable, um, explained in a blog post on Thursday, 
that the inspiration for the feature came after uh, after seeing many developers spend uh, precious time creating file selections on their own on their own as in like their own web pages. Thus, Chooser was designed uh, to be a quick and simple, just a few lines of HTML. The Dropbox Chooser function can be implemented as a button um, or pulled from a JavaScript. More details uh, for the drop uh, for developers are available on the Dropbox site. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Like that's going to be good. Like you just go around to certain sites that are supportive and you just click a button, and I suppose this opens up a, a dialogue and yeah, bang bang the files around. That's good. That, that sounds good. That sounds like a really good um, little thing. I love Dropbox. I think what you got. I think everyone here must have all the the free stuff, five gig stuff like that. But speaking of uh, Dropbox, what have I got at the moment? I've got mine's slowly getting bigger because I keep signing people up. Yeah, oh, me man. too. I was about to say the same thing. Oh, people, you know, I just like keep sending invites to something. people, and they, uh, you I know, got eight, I think, eight and a half. You know, when like you that. sign up for these things like Dropbox, and it says, "Oh, let me just scour your Gmail for all your contacts." Do you, do you just just yeah. blanket everyone? You just go, oh, yeah. "Yep." Yeah. <laughs> oh no! The first time, the first time it happened, I I did it, and I just sent it. And then now the only time I do it is when I've got a client, for example, that I've got to create a folder just for them to drop their work in. Mm. And, but for them to drop their work in, they've got to join up to Dropbox. So thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> 250 gig. Woo. Now, speaking, speaking of Dropbox, now, this, is, this, is, this is an easy way. This is how we collect the, the files to go up to the radio. AussieTechHeads.com.au forward slash radio. It's Shoutcast server. You can uh, download the Shoutcast app, search for the Aussie Tech Heads on the Shoutcast app uh, on your iPhone. And uh, we, we're looking for shows to, to populate the radio with. So uh, if you've got a, a podcast that you, that you do, uh, small, big, long, whatever, uh, drop me a line. And all you have to do each week, whenever you produce it, is put it into a Dropbox folder and then it will automatically find its way up to the radio and it will be there for 14 days. So there you go. So if you're producing uh, uh, you know, current and regular content, you're, you're, you'll have a current and regular uh, footprint up on the AussieTechHeads.com.au for slash radio. We're using 128K now? Yes, so it should be nice and yes. easy. Yep, nice and easy. <laughs> uh, to you, you, you're already uploading it to your your podcast, your favourite server, you know, your favourite host to to, to mm. disseminate. So just uh, do one more little upload. Where you go? It's already 128. Let's get going. Let's populate it because there's a couple of shows. Just us, uh, Marks the Den, and uh, I've just got Garth's got a little show he does. Uh, got some old. You got 35 episodes of chewing the fat. You can throw up there if you wish. Yeah, but they're all big. They're, I'm trying to get less than 14 day old. It's got to be current content. <laughs> <laughs> well, but we could just, re, just change the title. The content won't be all that different. <laughs> That's right. It's all the same. But the, the, the crap, the crap's still going on. <laughs> but, uh, that's right. Well, it is, isn't it? But uh, yeah, oh, so, yeah, yeah. But it's uh, it's up there. So if you've got a podcast, or you want to do it, well, even if you want to do a podcast, give me a ring and we can, or give me an email and we can set you on the right track. You've got something you want to talk about? Yep. So all right. Now let's have a look at another little story that I might have. What else did I have? Oh, how's this one? Microsoft reportedly allows pirates to activate unlicensed installations of Windows 8 Pro. Did you? Cool. Yeah. Did you guys hear about that one? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what's happening here. No, but tell me how. <laughs> Users running pirated copies of Windows 8 Pro can reportedly upgrade to a fully licensed and permanently activated version of it by simply installing the free Windows 8 Media Center upgrade offered by Microsoft. <laughs> Now, remember a couple of weeks ago, uh, Windows 8 doesn't come with the media center. So you've got to go out and uh, buy the, the media center if you want the media center part of Windows. But what they're doing until January 13, to, well, just January sometime, that they're going to allow, they're, gonna, they're giving you a free key. All you've got to do is email them and go back through the show notes or search the show notes because there was a link there to do it. And they'll give you a key. So this is the key that will let you install it for free until uh, July 13. So, however, the problem is that the upgrade process doesn't check if the existing product key is valid or not, as long as the system appears to be activated. So users who install Windows 8 Pro without paying for a license currently activate their systems by using rogue KMS servers that accept any product key as valid. So KMS, which is the key management service, so it's all this, you know, all the security hoopla that they're trying to go through. I don't know why they bother. It's 40 bucks or something. Let's let it go. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, KMS was designed to allow enterprises with a Microsoft Volume License Agreement to activate new Windows installations using a server located on the internal network. KM-based activation is temporary and has to be used, renewed every 180 days. However, it seems that after applying the free uh, Media Center upgrade and using the unique product key supplied by Microsoft, that the temporary KMS activation, whether legitimate or not, becomes permanent. So there you go. That's... Uh, that's got to give them some worries. That, that is actually going to be a problem later on down the track, though, once people lose both their CDs and their product codes. I mean, Harvey Norman at the moment selling Windows 8 for 50 bucks and the Media Center for 50 bucks, and wouldn't believe me when I told them you could download it for free. But well, the thing they? is, people are going to go and buy that, and they're going to have two CDs, they're going to have two activation codes, they're going to have, you know, it's just going to turn into a, a real pain. So... Yeah, look, look, I um just pay for it already. Yeah, I yeah, don't... but it's not even that. Even if you do pay for it, I mean, you've got you've got to manage two separate, you know, I don't products know. effectively. I don't know if Microsoft's getting if it's getting easier in their old age or not. But I look, I, I fixed up a a Dell laptop the other day. I had to reformat it, and I thought it was a bit dodgy on whether you know I could put the retail DVD of Vista into it and use the key on the bottom of the laptop. You, you've got a client and, that's using Vista. Yes. Well, they're not going to upgrade, um, are they? How, how, was the, 19, how was 1997? <laughs> as long as it's funky. the same funky. Um, level of product, it'll be fine. Yeah, so I had, to, um, I had to do a phone activation, which was fine, but it still worked. Because I've I've, I'm sure I've done previous things like this, uh, and even with XP, and it just wouldn't let me do it because... You know, it was just not on. But, the, yeah, it let me do it. It was a phone activation, and it, it let me do it. So I was pretty uh, happy with that at the end of the day. But anyway, that was a side, a side thing. Um, so what else have we got here? Um, Eric, did you have anything else? Any other thing else? I think I may. Now, now what have we got here? Yeah, you were going on about... Go on. Oh, just going, you, you were going on about Apple's one-day shopping spree or something. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, what's going on? Yes, that's Friday. That's... It applies. This is their not their day, their yearly Thanksgiving sale that they do. But because we don't really celebrate Thanksgiving in in Australia, and nor should we, unless you're American, you got no excuse. Um, but they still have the sale worldwide. Apple Store now shopping event prices will are solely available starting the 23rd of November 2012 at 2:01 a.m. It's getting right? earlier and earlier. Yep. So it's Friday morning. 2 what a. time zone would that be? Australian Eastern, Australian Eastern Daylight Saving Time to the 24th of November, 1.59 a.m. So 24 hours from 2 o'clock Friday morning. So is this, do we see this as another American tradition that's, going to, that's trying to force nah, its way onto nah. our shores? Well, well, we can't. We can't. How can, you, how can you have Thanksgiving in Australia? We didn't have pilgrims come over here. No, no, I'm not. Yeah, I know, I know with the Thanksgiving, but it's also, I think, isn't, it, isn't this, this shopping spree, it's actually called Black Friday? Black so, Friday, they call yeah. it, yeah. So what is Black Friday, you might ask, because I didn't know. I'm looking at all these internet ads going, Black Friday, is it Friday the 13th or something? I'm going, no, no, no it's just Thanksgiving. No, no, no. It's just the name for the Thanksgiving, yeah. the day after Thanksgiving sale, yeah, basically. So, so Black Friday is the name given to the day following Thanksgiving in the U.S., traditionally, traditionally the beginning of the Christmas shopping season. So on this day, yes. most major retailers open extremely early, uh, often at 4 a.m. or earlier, and offer promotional And close extremely sales. late. Yes, so similar to our Boxing Day sales. So now apparently Best Buy apparently has Apple's blessing to slash $50 off the price of a 32 gig black and white version of the iPad 3, now $550. This is US, obviously. And yeah. there's, there's, there's well, like last year, he, this, this is the slash that, this is what happened last year. iPod 2, between $40 and $60 off. iPod Nano, 11 bucks off, big deal. iPod Touch, 21 to $40 off. MacBook Air, 100 bucks off. MacBook Pro, $100 off. iMac, $100 off. That were the that were the right the um, discounts last year, so um, it'll be similar this year, and I'm going to uh, jump on that and uh, get some Chrissy presents on there with some discounts. Mm. Yeah, good, good. Uh, Will, you got you got one here about is it Click Frenzy? Is that what I've seen? Yeah, what's this going on? Bit with of a Click laugh. Frenzy is a, I mean, what is yeah, this? Big flop. Don't bother going to look it up because the site's probably still down anyway. But basically, <laughs> what, you're probably right. What it is, it's another one of those, uh, you know, 
discount slash you do something for us, we'll do something for you and get stuff, websites. Um, but basically what it is, they had in, in the, somehow they managed to get a million people signing up. Um, they subscribed to Click Frenzy. I'm not sure how they, how they did that given that the site hasn't worked. But um, basically what nobody did was nobody read the fine print. And in the fine print it states that we will sell your details to everybody for five years. Oh, oh. really? <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. How dodgy is that? It, it states it. It says it. You know, I didn't I read, read it. it. <laughs> Uh, so basically, and look, I, look I registered. I'll, I'll be honest. I registered. Think I'll see what this is about. And I got on there when I can finally get on, if it wasn't crashing. And the discounts, whoopie do. You could go into any store and ask for the same discount. It's just a big yeah, scam. Exactly. Um, basically, scam. it's just a traffic, a traffic director. Um, but yeah, basically, ex experts warned disgruntled customers could be bombarded with advertising and promotions as a consequence of signing up to the event. Um, quick, click, yeah, click Frenzy's privacy policy states with consent it will share details with all our affiliates and for direct marketing purposes for up to five years. Um, Not very private for and, a privacy policy. Yeah, it goes through and, and it says a few other things, but then later on it it, it says things like um, businesses were charged up to thirty three thousand dollars for a single ad and sixteen hundred and fifty to be involved with the website for their. Uh, for their, you know, promotions and everything like that. And then my spokeswoman, Joe Lynch, said that the department store would review its uh, investment after the event had concluded. The spokeswoman for, um, said the company would be definitely looking into the possibility of a refund. It could have damaged our brand as well. Um, other retailers, including Target, Dan Murphy's and Masters. Um, I reckon that all there's these... There's Cameras Warehouse, Deals Direct, Cameras House, Toys R Us. Basically, they're all looking into it saying that, well, hang on, you know, we don't want to be I seen reckon, as being responsible for you getting all the spam. I reckon that uh, half of that's bull and the other half's all you know what. Because I reckon these guys... This is, <laughs> how, how do you think... Like, how do you think that this, this little startup has got all these major companies signing up you know, to, to be a part of this, like Microsoft, the Myers, the, and all the others Will just mentioned, it, it's, a, it's a joke. They've signed up because they've got you signed up. You'll give you 33, you give us 33,000, we'll give you the bloody mailing list. That's probably what's That's happening. right. We'll give you the but data. They 30 grand because yeah. now they've got five years worth of mailing list. Yeah. So which, all, is, which is pretty cheap. Turns out to be about 10 cents a, a, a customer. Yeah, it's all this huff I and think, puff about bloody damn brand new. It was none, that, you, know what, you know what I think it is? They've got it the was list. Just a, it was just an elaborate way to get a database. Yeah, they've already got the yeah. list. They're out of here. Um, but it's funny because they were only expecting about 100,000 visitors, um, but they had one and a half million uniques which before the website crashed. So in some respects, they probably got a good deal because if they were paying $33,000 for 100 views, they still paid $33,000 to get 1.5 million views. So they've got 15 <laughs> times the traffic and they haven't paid any more. <laughs> yeah, well, they had, the, they had uh, the foresight of making up a, a banner to say that they were overloaded. So they obviously, yeah. <laughs> they already, they obviously knew uh, what was yeah, going to so happen. Basically, right. if, you, if, you're part of click, if you're part of Click Frenzy, unless you want to continually re receive spam for the next five years, go and unsubscribe. I don't think you can... I had a quick look because I had to sign up. I don't think you can unsubscribe from the mailing list. You can unsubscribe from the service. Yep, too uh, late. I'm trying to look. I'm looking at that now. It's not in there. There's no nothing in there. Yeah, there's there a is contact a us. There's a contact. You could probably ask them on the contact email. Uh, no, there's, there's a button there somewhere because I did it before, unless they've taken it out. No, taken it down, mate. <laughs> because it's everybody was unsubscribing. You can't, that's right. You can't, no, it's gone. It's yeah. not there. You can't unsubscribe there. because that's when all the big retailers would want their money back. They want the database. <laughs> that's right. That's yeah. right. You can't that's... unsubscribe because I ask for a refund. Oh, huff and puff, Maya. Now, uh, let's, I let's... unsubscribed from Sony's account earlier, so obviously in the last few hours... Oh, they've taken it out. ...this morning, so since this morning, they've taken the unsubscribe button away. Yeah, the, yeah, the site's still <laughs> overloaded, but it's not through people signing up. It's just yeah, exactly. People it's through people trying to sign, sign off. <laughs> that's right, that's signing out. That's right. Oh, it's the crazy. mailing list database is too big and it keeps crashing the server. Yeah, oh, rubbish, <laughs> rubbish. Now, um... What what else have we got? Uh, look, I might have another one here somewhere. Just a quick follow up to a story we had last week about uh, John McAfee, how he's hiding, he's in, you know, in uh, he's doing the whole 
Chris, this whole scafe thing. It's pretty like, funny, I reckon, actually. Um, yeah, basically he saying now, he's he's actually started doing a uh, blog he's, that he's putting up himself, he's updating regularly, um, and basically he's saying things like... From, a, from across the road, the police. Yeah, he's he's basically dressing up like a like a you know, a uh, street bum or whatever, and he's standing across the road watching the police raid his house seven times, and yeah, he's approached. Yeah. <laughs> so Funny. he's he's off his he's, head. Whether or not it's true, you know, but it's hilarious. He's, he's saying that, you know, um, obviously he's saying he didn't murder this guy even though he didn't like his dogs. But, um, yeah, he's basically saying that he he's... One day he was actually selling burritos to the... Um, to the pe- the, the cops who were staking oh, out his apartment. Geez. That's <laughs> hilarious. He's able. To... That's hilarious. I did love you, it. Did you did you um see the Oprah Winfrey the Op- Oprah tweet? Oh, yeah. <laughs> now I don't know. Do you reckon? Is, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the premise before before I comment on this. But Oprah Winfrey took to Twitter to endorse one of what she calls her favorite things: the Microsoft. Surface tablet. She's a liar. The she prob- got paid to say that. Well, yeah, it's her favourite thing because she got paid a shitload of money. For she got it. paid a squillion dollars to say yeah. that. And do you know what happened though? And they did they have one under everyone's seat? No, she sent it via the iPad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what's happened. Yeah, so- but that's only because there wasn't a spare surface for her to use. No, no, no. The, the, she tried sending it from the surface, but it wouldn't work. <laughs> so later yeah. a fan rep- responded to Winfrey saying I have an iPad now have been checking out the Surface which is better Winfrey tweeted back keyboard easier for me on the Surface uh, which she also sent on her iPad She's, so that's crazy isn't it she bought 12 for Christmas see but the thing is they're not available yet so she's never actually touched one yeah oh, dear. Yeah. She, apparently she bought 12 to give away but, uh, but who, who would know who would know so, um, yeah, good on Oprah. Yeah. 12 to give away, one to all her friends, and the audience can go to hell. Yeah, well, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's because Microsoft's too cheap to give out 150 of them. That's right. Exactly, <laughs> they would be. So oh, you wouldn't even give it away. <laughs> yeah, they'd stay there, that everyone needs to walk away, and there'd still be 150 under the seats. <laughs> have, a pop-up, have a pop-up store in the Oprah Winfrey studio. <laughs> and a surface bin at the side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You can't see a movie. You throw your 3D goggles at you. Got yeah, that's it. That's exactly <laughs> right. Look, I, I just, I, I want a Surface. I think they're great. I want one. So I'm only mucking around. But look, yeah. I, can I, you get I, one, please? Because I need a good laugh. No, no. I, I they, wouldn't they, mind. I mean, I don't know if I'd fork out for one, but I wouldn't certainly mind playing with one. I think. Oh, be- if anyone's listening out there wants to give me a review unit that I can laugh at, please feel, feel free. Yeah, you're getting one now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. want one. Yeah, no, no. Look, it's 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 good. It's a, it's a Windows little, it's a Windows device. It's of course it's going to be good. Of course, why well, wouldn't it? Now, uh, now I think uh, Shane, we haven't heard from wow. Shane. Where's Shane gone? <laughs> has he? Has he? Oh, got, yeah. What's your, what's up with Facebook? What do they do? I think you, you yeah. and Will might have had the same story. I think we might probably. Have, yeah. We can do a tandem thing. Um, basically, Ooh. my version of the story is Ouch. where. Um, yeah, that came out wrong. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> all right. So when you all right. So the story starts getting back on track. When you're dealing with one billion people's um, personal information, security is critical. You would think anyway. Uh, but Facebook didn't want to sacrifice speed. That's why, apparently, long story short, they're introducing HTTPS, which is the secure version of HTTP, which is what the web works on. Um, they've actually had it for a couple of years as sort of a, um, a voluntary thing. Um, in that last, in the last couple of years, they've basically been working on the infrastructure um, just to make sure that when they actually switch it on by default for everybody, um, they don't see any sort of degradation in service and speed and all that kind of stuff. Um, it goes on to say that it's a you can opt out, but by default it'll be turned on for everybody. Yeah, I think okay. that's a good idea. And and Google seems to be turned on by default now as well. Is that default everywhere I think, as well? Um, if you use Facebook on a Android device, I don't know about iOS because I don't have one, but if you go to HTTPS, like web browser, instead of using the app, occasionally it just wigs out and won't let you log in. So whether or not that was just part of their testing or whether it's going to be a common problem. Mm, mm, I see. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah I, I got an email from them today about their security updates that they're, they're doing. Um 
they're basically up, they're sending out everybody emails. Well, so I got one, so I'm assuming everybody who's on <laughs> Facebook got one. Um, basically saying that there's new tools for managing your Facebook messages. There's changes to how they refer to certain products, whatever that means. Um, there's reminders about what's visible and other people to other people on Facebook, which is a good one because if you've got your privacy settings, you might have it to friends only, you might have it whatever, but you might have a post you want everybody to see. And if you don't change it on that post, everyone might see it. So that's actually handy. Um, but basically, one thing I did read when I went into the facebook.com slash fb site governor, governance, what, whatever governance. that is. Governance. Governance. Is there uh, an actual link you can go to? <laughs> the well, the governator. My, I'll be back. <laughs> my mouse was in the way and I wasn't smart enough to move it. Um, uh, yeah, so you can go there and you check things out. But I did read that they're considering dropping their... Although I didn't even know they had it. Apparently they had a public review on all their security updates that they would... On all their privacy settings, they'd put them to public opinion before they'd do them, mm. uh, apparently. But they're yeah. dropping that. Oh, so. okay. Now, um, <laughs> now, Will, now the, here's a story that I think... Um, I'm not sure what this has got to do with uh, tech, but we'll, we'll take it anyway. I'm sure you're going to tell us. But, uh, yeah, the do-gooders and the fun police, they're at it again with, the, with Jeep, yeah. apparently. Which is, with who? I mean, Jeep Australia. Jeep. Right. Jeep, the car. Wait, what have they done now? Um, basically, I mean, you know, it, it's, it's been a thing for years that sex sells. You know, so obviously Jeep Australia basically caused an uproar after posting a Facebook picture of a bikini-clad model suggesting that the Australian Defence Force save money by changing the women's uniform to a fem of by changing the uniforms of female soldiers to bikini bottoms. Um, obviously, it's all jest. It's just they've a been bit doing of that sort of advertising for years. What it's are the fun please on about? It's a joke. Well, this is. I mean, the tech comes into it because it's published on Facebook. It was linked to on their Twitter account. Uh, it was on their website, obviously, things like that. So social media, it went viral. It, oh, it get over yourselves, people. Good you know, God. as you'd expect, pictures the, like that go viral pretty quick. So, if you don't like you know, it, don't buy the Jeep. Yeah, and the, po yeah, that's the, it, the, the post was deleted. So, oh, yeah. see, that's it. Yeah. The politicians and the and the do-gooders and the political correct, it's, gone, it's just gone too far. Yeah. Well, what I was listening you to... You know what my little girl said to me the other day? She said, Dad, I said, yes, darling. And she said, do you know that politics is Hollywood for ugly people? <laughs> That's right. You've taught She's her 11. Well. You've taught her well. She's 11. <laughs> but it just goes to show just how how ridiculous this is all coming up. Why, would, but why, why not just keep that photo? Oh, geez, it annoys there's me There's a quote well. in here me. about um, uh, there's a website apparently called Mumbrella, which sounds like a mother's website to me. I haven't actually looked at it, but... One of the posts on there was saying, uh, yuck, how sexist. Um, you just define your target market. Goodbye. Good. Good. No one yeah. wants to use it. To drive. See you later. We don't want ugly redheads driving the car anyway. <laughs> um, that's like, well, hang on. Yeah. How does that... What's that? I mean... It, <laughs> yeah, it's retarded. I don't know. It just doesn't... I, I guess what, what I'm getting at is it's, this was just a classic example of what's been happening a lot lately. Somebody posts something... Hmm. You know, and it, it either gets taken out of context, context it gets, uh, you know, goes viral. You've, it's split into two categories. You've got the people who say there's nothing wrong with it. you get the people who say it's disgusting, get rid of it. And normally the people who say it's disgusting, get rid of it, are in the vast minority. And normally but they follow they the but get they, rid of it. But they follow the minority. That's the problem. Yeah, mm. that's but it. I was um, listening. I was listening to a talkback radio the other day, and a lady rang up and complained uh, about that. There's a car ad on at the moment, and I think it says, "How many friends have you got?" or whatever. And the car drives around to the pub, and about ten people get out. Drives another two hundred meters, another ten people get out. And, you know, blah blah blah, giving the impression that that, that that you can fit a lot of people into a car. So the complaint so was. So she's basically she's taking it literally. Yeah, she's saying this is promoting uh, overcrowding in cars, and that's yeah, why. We, we, oh, it's yeah. unsafe driving. You shouldn't have these sort that's, of ads. <laughs> that's right. We should get that person back again. <laughs> Eric, that was very good. It was, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, we we'll have to think of a name for that for that character. <laughs> Mrs. McGillicuddy. <laughs> Mrs. Oh, Head. she's been taken. Um, <laughs> but Mrs. yeah, Mrs. it's Mrs. the same Head. thing happened with all the. Um, <laughs> Same thing happened with all the um, Commodore ads and, and everything like that, where they used, you know, you, 
they used to let loose doing circle work and racing around the track and stuff like that. And now there's some stunt driver in a fire suit wearing a helmet with a roll cage, filmed under controlled conditions, doing 30 kilometres an hour on a straight section yeah. of the road. That's right. I remember that. It was the um, it was the uh, Holden um, the Holden Ute oh, ad with the ACD the song Thunder in the background. Yeah, it was the storm ads. The whole yeah, storm. and the, and they oh, that's unsafe driving. We mustn't have that on television. Yeah, because some guys doing circle work in a paddock. Four thousand acre paddock. He's going to hit a cow. So <laughs> these these are, these are the sort of people who don't watch Top Gear. Have you seen the amount of ha havoc that they <laughs> cause? Oh my God! Especially yeah. Top Gear America. They're the worst at it. Uh, uh, yeah, but they're just bad drivers. I prefer the English one. <laughs> Didn't they Funnier. have something similar a couple of months ago? I think it might have been, and it was a Red Bull ad where they were doing you know hooning right. in, a, in a car park or something. Yep. Yeah, can block. But that's but that's I don't you know I don't mind. It's truth in advertising. You have Red Bull, and that's what you do. You know, it's it's accurate. VB <laughs> VB got done for that ad with the the dog taking the pants off the girl. You know, <laughs> I didn't see that one. Oh, oh yeah, well all well, the bugger ads went away. The Toyota ads. Oh yeah, oh, bugger. I think yeah. I, by these guys. Speaking are, of, a, of an ad along those lines, do you guys get the ad? I think it's a car ad where. Um, there's two versions. Right at the end, the there's a guy and his daughter, and one version Boss the guy wagon. says, uh, "Yeah, that's right." And one version the guy says, "I'll oh, beat me," and then the other version the daughter says, "I'll oh, beat me." Daughter says it, yeah. Yeah. I've, I've, only seen, you know. I've only ever seen that daughter say it once. You know what the funny thing is? I think I've got a theory. They these ads they purposely go over the line a little bit because they know it's going to be talked about. Mm, and the probably, more it's yeah. talked about, the more you remember the product. And what they're just they uh, and the bureaucrats and the do gooders are just pandering to exactly what they want to happen. They want to cause controversy because it makes people talk about their product. Mm, we'll look yeah, at maybe. that, yeah. um, that, look at that Libra ad or whatever it was, the one where you it's Gorilla you Marketing, know. I think it's called. <laughs> With wings. You know. Yeah, no, no. The one where she she's um feeding her she's manicuring her uh her beaver. <laughs> and then like, at the end of the ad, it says, because you've only got one. It's an well, animal. It's a beaver. It's yeah, a living right. animal. I don't it's, understand. Yeah, what, it's, a, it's, an actual, yeah. it's an right, actual right. animal <laughs> from the forest. Yeah. I mean, what's the big deal? She's, she's buffing a beaver, and then she's only got one. I mean, I don't understand. But, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. It could, it, look, it could have been a pussy. Well, so, right. you know, yeah, she's yeah, only right. got one cat. Innuendo has so, been exactly. around since you know? bloody Are You Being Served. And that, that shows oh, the God, they, oh, they were the, the kings of India <laughs> in the end, though. Like Benny Hill. I, uh, <laughs> Mr. Grace, I can't come over right now. My pussy's wet. <laughs> oh, no. Because she just washed her cat. Yeah, yeah. My pussy's dripping on the carpet, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's crazy, but anyway, because she just got the cat out of the bath. What can you say? That's right. Well, let's 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 bring it back. Look, I've got a couple of quick ones. We can all go through our, our quick ones if if you if you want. Um, Apple apparently shares have fallen a bit. Fallen. No, uh, no worry about that. Move uh, on. Lost about a quarter of its value. They were at a high of seven hundred and five dollars, uh, seven hundred and five US, but now they've dropped to five twenty six. Yeah, good. So, yeah, good time to buy them. That's right. That's right. I think apparently I'll take one. Well, without, without going without going right into it, uh, and, and all the twos and fro's of why it's dropped, but maybe one of the reasons is that because they're so high, people sold them. They wanted to make some money. Yeah, you know, yeah, they're profit takers. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. If you bought at five hundred and you hit up to seven hundred, and you had ten of them, mm. that's two thousand dollars. Now, Eric, or, if you had a hundred of them, that's twenty grand you, you'll, or more. You, you'll confirm this that every good. Uh, in stock investor will have an exit strategy, and it's probably hit the Always. price. It's, you know, Always. It's all about timing. You buy and sell. You buy and now they'll 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 sell at seven hundred, and the same ones that sold at seven hundred now buying back at five hundred. Yep. Mm -hmm. I saw and a um, do it all over again. I saw a story. I don't know if it was today or the other day, where the guy, the CEO for Disney, he sold a million Disney shares or something, and then bought a million. No, he bought. He bought a million. He bought Apple shares. That's right. Yeah. yeah he so he sold the Disney million. ones to get Apple. And bought, and bought Apple. Yeah. That's right. Bob Iger. His name is. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Ro Robert Iger. I -G -E he's in the book, isn't he? He's a what? He's in the book, isn't he? Isn't he in the? He's Doctor in the book. book. He's in the yeah. book, and he's in. If you want another book about Disney specifically, which is fascinating, it's called Disney Wars. It's called Disney Wars. It's fantastic audio book. Get it on Audible. Very good. Is is Walt still on ice? Oh, he's head. Well, um, well, <laughs> there is a rumor that he's still on ice. Right. So he must be. Mm -hmm. He will be. He's on ice. 
Oh, he's on ice. He's <laughs> probably having dinner. He's probably going, yeah, they think I'm dead. <laughs> he's, got yeah. hanging out. he's just the head. He auditioned for the show, but I, I said no. <laughs> you can knock him back say, mate, you get those Mickey Mouseys off. You look ridiculous. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Maybe no wonder, it could, no wonder it could come here on Futurama. Maybe, That's right. maybe he what, did too. You're right. <laughs> maybe, maybe what Walt has to do is get off the ice and reset his body clock. Now, there's this new device launched, a green light device, which resets your body clock. How's that, eh? Now, I've got a, a picture of the. Uh, oh, I might have. No, I don't have a picture of the web page. So where do you stick that? What your body clock? <laughs> the device <laughs> in your beaver. Now, new... <laughs> give it to your beaver and reset your beaver. Yeah. Now, a uh, this device worn like sunglasses and known as the Retimer was launched in Adelaide by researchers who said it's a world first. Now, their chief inventor, Professor Leon Lack, said the device emits a soft green light into the eyes. You beg your pardon. His name was what? Leon Lack. <laughs> oh, right. I okay. I thought, you said, I thought you said. I thought. The, remember that journalist a few stories ago, a couple of months ago, uh, written by Long Shuang. <laughs> oh. That was his name, well, Long a, Shuang. Sam Sung's cousin. Yeah, well, what about that Apple, right. em, Apple employee, oh, Sam sorry, Sung? Yeah. yeah, so anyway. Yeah, that's right, Sam Sung. Now, um, look, here's the webpage if you want to know. The web, webpage is at re-timer.com. It's all in the show notes, which obviously... That would be interesting, but, you know, I wouldn't ever know. You got, I suppose it's only going to affect people who, like, you know, fly overseas and... Mm. I'm sorry. Well, not just fly overseas, overseas, but flying to like Matt. You know, you 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 leave here at four in the afternoon, and you expect it to be, um, you know, midnight when you get there. But it's you know, it's um, you know, eight o'clock in the morning. You think, oh, holy crikey, that's when you need it. No, I'm sorry. If you can afford to fly uh, overseas, you can afford to deal with the jet lag. The light from Re Timer. <laughs> stimul- yeah, uh, it's your own fault. Stimulate- Stay in your own country. Stimulates the part of the brain responsible for regulating the 24-hour body clock. Body clocks can vary regularly over the 24-hour cycle, but this is often impaired by staying indoors, travelling to other time zones, working irregular hours, or a lack of sunlight during winter. Oh, get outside. People wanting to fall asleep and wake up either should wear the glasses for three days for 50 minutes each uh, each day after waking in the morning to advance the body clock. Retimer, which has an inbuilt rechargeable battery, costs $273. So there you go. Ooh, ouch. I mean, mm. in the old older days, like it used to be called seasonal depression or seasonal depression disorder. When you know, in winter, a lot of people would. That's get right. No, it's true. Stuck indoors. Yep. That's right. Well, that's why the pommies are so freaking miserable because nine months of the year it's raining and well, that's disgusting why the and cloudy. Drink vodka all, the Russians drink vodka all year. <laughs> to keep well, to keep warm, number one. Well, yeah, it's but free. they're stuck in. They, you know, they, they everywhere they turn, it's white. That doesn't make any difference. It's, it looks the same. Now, the yeah. West, Westpac's updated their iPad app to include BPay, uh, bill, blah, 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 blah. The update also includes a tool to locate the nearest Westpac branch or ATM. Westpac released the iPad app in July. It has been downloaded 100,000 times and has been used for 1.2 million banking sessions and payments totaling 425 million. So if you're with Westpac... Yeah, good to see that Westpac's that caught up with the ING app that's been out for five years. Oh, that's good. That's because good. ING got an app. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? It's been out for like five years. It oh, does really? BPay, it does data locations, it's your nearest branch, it does your nearest uh. post office, it does uh, oh, really? transfers, it does... Yeah, it's fantastic. It's I fantastic. must get that. Hmm. Now, I've, I did, I've got an ING account. I did have another, just one more quick one before we move on to you guys. Now, this was, if I can find it, it was about... Oh, look, there's a Harvey Norman there. You can go to the show. Speaking of ING, quickly while you're finding that, ING too, if you use the PayWave, new cards have PayWave. Oh, there it, it is. And, and you get five uh, percent back on every purchase if you use PayWave. Yeah, right. So I don't have the I don't have the PayWave. I just have no, uh, just savings account. Just ring up and order a new card, and I'll send you the PayWave. But yeah, because um, all their accounts use use Visa debit. Visa um, debit. Yeah. So yeah, you can use PayWave, and yeah, five percent. I've just got a, a savings account with them. Can I have get a Visa debit link it to it? It will be a Visa debit. Yeah, it will be automatically. Oh, okay. You press credit. Well, there you go. Look at that. There you go. Oh, brilliant. I just downloaded it. Thank you, Will. Didn't know they had one. I kept logging in on the bloody web page. Oh, you don't want to do that. Idiots. That's fair. Actually, that's <laughs> probably one of the best uh, things too as well, their uh, online banking. Is. Well, their they, mobile app, their mobile website's not bad actually. They are an online bank, so they don't really have a choice, I suppose. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Uh, all right, Eric, did you have any other little stories you want to quickly run oh, through? Oh, let me see, let yeah. me see, let me see, Think let me see. Might be. Did you have another story, Glenn, or did you not find it? Look, I had the picture, but I can't find the story. But it's about... <laughs> all right, just, just a quick one. 
Apple, Apple Television, our iPad Mini, MacBook Air, speculation for 2013. <coughs> Business Insider relays a report from analyst Gene Munster. Got to change that name. Munster has been one of the most vocal proponents of an Apple Television set right. with multiple claims that Apple is indeed working on such a device. In the latest report, Munster pushes back his predictions for a delivery of the TV set to November 2013. So this guy's always coming out with crap, so I don't know if they believe him or not. I don't know if they'll ever come out with one. And if they do, I don't think it'll be this year. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'm happy with that, what the little thing they've got now. I don't need a TV. Uh, any others, Eric? No, that'll do me. Uh, Shane, any others that you want to do quickly go through? Uh, only I'll touch on this other one that you've got highlighted, the Samsung CEO. Quick version of the story is the Samsung CEO has just had a dig at Apple, um, basically saying that if it wasn't for Samsung's Wi-Fi patterns that um, the iPhone you know, wouldn't be half the phone that it is. Liar. Um, they go on to say that they're still fighting the lawsuit. They're not going to cave like HTC and just pay the money. Oh, um, and there's rumours of the Galaxy S4 and some other thing that I can't see now that I'm trying to find it. Uh, but definitely rumours of a Galaxy S4 coming out, 5-inch OLED screen um, and all the rest of the fruit that you normally get. So the iPhone couldn't exist without uh, without the patents, but the iPhone was out in 2007 and, and Samsung started in, what, 2010? Samsung done wireless network cards back in about 1990. Yeah, but... So it's the same technology. Yeah, right. So what are they saying? So Apple's never paid for this technology? Never Pretty much. It. I mean, they're, they're basically doing to Apple what Apple does to them. Yeah, right. Um, you know, so yeah. it's, it's no. just one of those back and forth things that's just annoying and they're just spending the money that we're paying for the phone. So, I mean, mm. people, have day, people have yeah, stopped listening. People have stopped listening. Yeah, at the end yeah. of the day, it's just, it. a, it's just a dog fight. I mean, they, they'll sue, they'll counter sue. That's right. People like HTC, the reason HTC paid the money was because Samsung was next in line. HTC basically. The uh, Samsung's basically fighting the same patent wars. If Samsung wins, HTC will get their money back, so it's no big loss anyway. All right, now I found this other little story uh, that I was going to tell you about. It's apparently a couple of weeks ago we've been uh, talking about this Digital Post Australia and Australia Post, this Digital Post, there's two that's similar. And uh, But anyway, the Digital Post Australia, which is not the Australia Post version, the Digital Post Australia at digitalpost.com.au has been launched, apparently. So there you go. You can go and sign up to that. Um, so you can get all your bills online, apparently. So cool. when the, that kicks off in, uh, it looks like, oh, it's got Play apps. It's got app stores, iOS and Android apps. So it looks like it's uh, it's going to be good. Now, sorry, uh, Shane, did you have any more before we uh, start wrapping? Uh, no more stories as such, but um, I did want to give something, you know, a plug or something, some sort of kudos. Yes. Plug uh, away. I found a web page that you probably know about anyway, but I only stumbled across it because I was watching something on Twitter the other day called If, if This oh, Then yes. That, where basically you just um, you can program things to happen automatically. Like I've got at a certain time, it'll automatically post on Facebook that the show's about to start. When um, when you put the um, add the video to YouTube, Glenn, another thing goes on my Facebook saying that the video is now available. Right, um, right. I had it set it up for very good, Twitter, very good. But um, apparently, the Twitter API kind of changed, and the yes. Twitter part's not working. Yeah, I think so I, I heard, use uh, yeah. ping ping dot fm for the same. Well, now Seismic owns it now, but yeah, it's not quite as good as it used to be. But I do the same thing with that. Uh, yeah, does so it work with Twitter? Yep. Okay. Hmm, cool. Oh, good. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Tumblr, etc. Oh yeah. Um. Yes. Yeah, I had a couple of quick stories. Just talking about the whole PayWave thing when we're talking about ING. Um, Vodafone is implementing... Basically, PayWave is a, a chip in your card. You can swipe it over the front of the FPOS machine instead of having you putting your card in. There's no pin. Up to $150, I think. There's no pin. You just thing just swipe it and go. That's right. Um, but I hope your card doesn't get nicked. Well, it's kind of irrelevant anyway because they're doing away with signatures. So you're only going to be able to use pins... So as of, I think it's as of middle of next year, no, nobody's going to accept signatures anyway. Um, well, no one checks but, yeah. them anyway. So what's the no. But the NFC, which is the Neil Field, Neil Field Communications, um, which is in your credit card, is coming to... It's already in some phones, Samsung Galaxy S3, Nexus 4, for example. In Australia, we haven't really used it that much, uh, but it's starting to come, come on a bit more now. Vodafone's actually doing an initiative 
uh, with Visa, and they've got their own system coming out. Uh, it's called Vodafone Smart Pass, but it's the same sort of thing. Basically, the all your credit, if you have credit cards with those chips in them, they'll basically be migrated across into your phone, so you, you can just use your phone to swipe it. You know, you, instead of having to dig out your wallet, and get your credit card. So nice. Nice. So that'll be pretty neat. Uh, it'll also be used, uh, you know, if you go to a sports event, for example, you can swipe it to buy a ticket or to prove your identity, or you know. So it'll, it'll have, it will have many more uses as as the technology gets uh, progresses. Um, now, go on, Will. Know. Just do your quick Doctor Who story, please. Oh, I was going to leave that one for you. I was just going to quickly mention uh, if you're on, if you're in an area where you say you might like using, uh, just say you use Optus because you prefer their plans. But you do occasionally go to somewhere that you need Telstra because you don't get signal. Um, Dick Smith has just bought, has just started selling the Galaxy Duo uh, for $199, which is a dual SIM um, phone. So you can run two SIM cards. You can switch between them on on the fly. Uh, there's there's a few different ones. There's about four, about three or four. There's an LG L2, the Hawaii Juice, and the Samsung Galaxy Duo. Um, basically, there's three phones at the moment that support dual SIMs, but it's a really handy idea. Um, you can have, you know, as I said, two different prepaid cards, or you can set it up however you want. So, nice. so that's pretty neat. For 200 bucks, you can get yourself a, a dual SIM phone. I have a question. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, a, uh, you could probably use that in an overseas kind of arrangement as well. But mm -hmm. at the moment, like I've got a work phone and I've got a personal phone, I can forward the calls from my personal phone to my work phone, but yep. obviously I can't forward SMSs. If I yep. get one of these fang dangled phones with the two SIMs in it, does that mean yeah, it'll, that it'll, yeah, yeah, it'll, 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 because it's one software, it'll just get both SMSs. Yeah, I mean, you have to be on that card. You can either set it to auto switch every half hour, for example, or you can set it to just press a button. It'll quickly go to the other one, check your message bank, check your SMSs, and go back. Yeah, you can permanently stay switched. There's a few different options, but it'll all stay because you're running the one, the one. Unless you set up different profiles, you're effectively running the one profile. So when you switch, you'll, all your SMSs, all your uh, your call history, everything will still be there because you, you, it's still the same device so mm. cool thanks now uh, and it has the advantage of call forwarding because call forwarding if you call from your phone but like you can you can send a call to from any phone to your phone but if you call them back on your phone you use your phone number instead of the one you call forwarded so if you've got the dual sims you can do it that way now uh will doctor who all right just for you yeah uh so basically just quickly <laughs> Uh, the, they could have had the ultimate spoiler for the the new Doctor New Doctor Who um, series because basically uh, a copy of the script for one of the most highly anticipated episodes in the new series was left in a cab by by one of the actresses, uh, and the title page was posted online. Now there's a backlash from from Doctor Who fans who saw the page on Reddit. Uh, and the person who posted the posted the uh, cover page was in two minds. Do I post the whole script or do I send it back? And anyway, social media for once actually prevailed. And um, the script was sent back to the BBC production offices in Cardiff. Good. Um, and basically, it was there was comments such as, um, you know, that needs to go back to BBC Wales office. A lot of people are excited about about Neil Gaiman's return to Doctor Who and producer Stephen Moffat put a lot into this casting. Please do the right thing. Tell your friends not to spoil it or let it fall into the wrong hands. Yeah, so, you don't want yeah, to basically, spoil basically, it. Basically, uh, yeah, they they listened to what the Doctor Who said and uh, within days a Reddit user known as Shrimp Dude, Shrimp Dude, <laughs> behind the thread, uh, the leaked script has been returned. He went to the Cardiff Bay with the girl who recovered it and they handed it over. Thanks Good. to everybody who who up who upvoted the post and everybody who helped contact the BBC. So, um, so good. yeah, so that it's it's actually a very interesting use for social media. Well, <laughs> yes, yes. Now, we'll, we'll, mm -hmm. I've just got one last thing before we go. And there's a birthday. There's a birthday, and you'll never guess what birthday it is. Has anyone guess? Uh, it's a it's a tech thing. It's a gadget. Uh, well, if you've read the notes, you would. I, I, <laughs> no. I'm trying to, I've... <laughs> Stop reading. Stop reading. I'll tell you what it is. It's the, apparently, it's the world's first webcam. There you ah, go. That's right. 
There you go. Now, I'm just going to play you uh, something while we talk about it. <laughs> You're going to play the first uh, broadcast? Am I going to get offended? <laughs> no. So now, 19 years ago, at the beginning of the 90s, the uh, World Wide Web had no search engines, no social networking sites, and no webcam. Now, the scientists credited with inventing the first webcam, thereby launching the revolution that would bring us video chats and live webcasts. The problem for scientists was that the coffee pot was stationed in the main computer lab, known as the Trojan Room, and many of the researchers worked in different labs on different floors. They would often turn up to get some coffee from the pot, only to find it had all been drunk, and the pot was empty. To solve the problem, he and other research scientists, Dr. Paul Jaretsky, rigged up a camera to monitor the Trojan Room coffee pot. The camera would grab images three times a minute, and they wrote software that would allow researchers in the department to run images from the camera on their internal computer network. It wasn't until 22nd of November 1993 that the coffee pot made it into the World Wide Web. The Trojan Room coffee pot was sold at auction over the internet, for three thousand three hundred and fifty pounds. Here's an idea. Why don't you just get a coffee pot in another room? Why do you have to pay the the um, the, 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 the brown shirt SS Stasi keeping an eye on who's drinking the coffee? I mean really. Just get another just, coffee pot. How tight are you? Well was not watching that story. Plus they're drinking shit coffee. Look at yeah, that. Look at garbage. Who drinks that crap? That's rubbish. Um, I was just watching that as it went through, actually. Um, other than the IBM multi-sync monitors, which are, which are awesome. Um, that <laughs> webcam is not exactly a webcam. It's a solid... It's a security steel. camera. It's a security, security camera. camera. Yeah. That security camera was probably worth two grand back then. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> More than that. That probably would have bought five coffee machines. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. You could have just bought five coffee machines and be done with it. But they're scientists, Eric. They they, they saw the call. Yeah, they okay. The they're need. scientists, and they they're scientists, and when they're not curing cancer, they're watching coffee pots. When that's was that? Right. Ninety three. Two, did you say? Ninety three. Yeah. So it's hard to believe that that was only ten years ago. Oh, 20, hang on, no, it wasn't. Twenty. It was Twenty years ago, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Wow. And there was no no. There was some search engines, but there, then again, there was hardly an internet back then. Not in Australia, anyway. Oh, it was very small internet back then. I think the search engine uh, Google was a year year later. Yeah. Um, in there, there, would have, there was things like uh, Alta Vista. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yahoo. And uh, what was the, there was what was the other one? InfoSeek. Um, Info. Info those. Yeah. They, oh, they were just these these oh, horrible things. Web Wombat. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, all that good stuff. <laughs> all right. Dogturd.com. <laughs> All right. Ask That's, Jeeves. Oh, he's still That's going. still there. Ask yeah. Jeeves is still there. He's a bit old ask now. Ask.com. Ask. Yeah. Is it still Ask Jeeves? That's it's dodgy. Ask, yeah, I don't know. Who <laughs> knows what it is? It's all rubbish. But anyway. I used to use Yahoo a lot. You had I used to. to use Yahoo all the time. And, everyone, and someone told me, oh, yeah, this is best at Google. You've got to use Google. It's about 1999. And this, this tech head, this techie guy, engineer, said, oh, yeah, mate, best search engine in the word Google. And I looked at the front page. I said, "It's only just a white page with Google <laughs> written on it." What are yeah. you talking about? Because he didn't have, you know, Yahoo had the, yeah. the, um, you know, the, the stock ticker and the news feeds and yeah. all that sort of thing. So it took me a long time to switch from Yahoo. I probably didn't go to Google proper until probably 2005. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I can't yeah. remember. I, I know I started off with InfoSeek and all those sort of the, the Alta Vista, and I think there was another one. Alta Vista I used to use. Yeah. Yeah, but, but too, back then in this country, it was still a lot of billboards going on, BBSs. Uh, yeah, that's true. The internet really still wasn't... The re internet hit its straps here at about 97, 98. Mm. Just before yeah. the big boom. Well, I remember I had, you know, 1,200 board modems back in probably 1991, and I was doing yep. Uh, yep. bulletin boards and stuff like that. Well, I tell you what, I was living the dream when I got my 56K modem, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tell me about it. it well, I was living the dream oh. when I got fourteen four. I couldn't believe it. I think I paid eight hundred bucks for it. Yeah, it's not ridiculous. It was, it was I was a think Banksy. I, I got a um, oh, there was a very popular brand of fifty six K modem in about nineteen ninety eight. I can't remember the name of it now. Banksy. Everyone used no. That's what I had. Everyone was buying them. They were just flying out the door. Net they com. were blue in color. No, wouldn't have been a netcom, would it? Banksy's I don't think was, it's no. Well, no, they were popular as well, but there was another one. It was blue in colour. Can't yeah, remember okay. it. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Motorola. Oh God, no. Um, you can see the uh, screen I just put up. That is 11th of November 1998. That's Google's first page. That was their prototype before. That was launched, but uh, 
That was all it was. Yeah, nice. So yeah. it hasn't really changed all that much. <laughs> Not really. It pretty much still says the same thing. Yeah. It's still in beta. Well, <laughs> that's out of beta now, isn't it? But anyway, anyway. All right, so uh, that brings us to the end of another show. Thanks for joining us. And if you want to get us on the Twitter, it's uh, I'm at Aussie Techheads, Will's at Mr. Tompkinson, Eric at Eric Franco, Eric with a K, and Shane at Shane1973 from memory. And that's Shane yep. with a Y. Or you can email. Oh, you can't phone us, but you can email <laughs> Glenn, Eric, Will, or Shane at aussietechheads.com.au. Uh, thinking about closing the forum, it doesn't get used anymore. Plus, there's also um, you know Facebook and all that sort of overtaking everything. So if anyone's got any objections, Object now or forever hold your peace. Um, no, stop. <laughs> all right. Now, if you want tech My news, trying to dial. If you want tech news in your Twitter feed, you can uh, subscribe to or follow at Aussie Tech News. And uh, so that's about all for this week. Uh, thanks for joining us. Don't forget, if you're looking for a hosting provider, aussietechs.com.au forward slash hosting, and uh, they'll we'll put you on the right track with some nice, affordable, fast Australian servers. And, uh, yeah, some pretty, pretty decent support uh, to boot. I don't know if you've um, plugged this yet, but I like the new format for the paper. Oh, yep, good. Paper, yes, uh, that's the aussietechheads.com.au forward slash paper. That's right. Now you can get it however you want on the desktop, iPad or whatever. And Eric's got a new toy. so <laughs> 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 And he's playing with it as we speak. And Always playing with it. Yes, I'll say so. Until next week, uh, see you later, Eric, Will, and Shane. See you guys next week. You will. Oh, see go, you, mate. Go back to Eric. What do you got? Glasses and hearts on your face. What do you have then? Oh, that's right. Yep. New toys. <laughs> All right. All right. See you, Eric. See you, Shane. See you next week. See ya. Yep. And see you, Will. See you, guys. See ya. And we'll see you guys in the lounge. Thanks for joining us and thanks for downloading. We'll see you next week. AussieTechS.com.au. Bye for now.